Good morning. Welcome to Daily Devotion. I'm Pastor Krieger. We begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our devotion today is, is based on uh, Romans 8, 28 to 30. And a lot of people know this passage. If you grew up with uh, memory work, it's likely you had to memorize this at some point. Uh, but it's one of those truths from God that makes total sense when you first hear it. But then when the situation is actually describing comes up in your own life, you find out that your understanding of it is shockingly deficient. Uh, Paul was talking about suffering. But not suffering in isolation. Um, Ten verses before what I'm going to read in a moment, Paul said our, that our present sufferings aren't even worth comparing with the glory that God will reveal in us. But what happens so often is that when we're in, uh, when we're in suffering, we can't see anything else. But this is the assurance that God gives us. Romans 8, uh, 28 to 30. And we know that in all things God works for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. For those God foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the likeness of his Son, so that he might be the firstborn among many brothers. And those he predestined, he also called. Those he called, he also justified. Those he justified, he also glorified. So uh, let's just recognize that this is an incredibly bold claim. Paul said that all things work for good. Now, what exactly is included in all things? Uh, that means that the things that we call good, also the things that we call bad. Uh, sometimes when we talk about suffering, we focus on like the dramatic, the tragic, the shockingly heavy things that this world can throw at us. But that would actually be limiting God. All things is a broad statement that, yes, includes the death of people we love, and it includes debilitating illness, and it includes fractured and severed relationships and betrayal and loneliness, but it also includes cloudy days and uh, symptoms of aging and getting a cold and someone stealing my parking spot. Now, I'm not saying that every symptom of living in a fallen, sinful world is ordained by God, but I am saying what Paul said. God uses all of it for our good. And I know what this seems like when it comes to our worst moments, like a, a smiley face sticker slapped thoughtlessly over a deep wound. Uh, as if this should just solve all of our problems and make us happy for the things that are that are terrible or that feel terrible. Uh, when, when everything is falling apart, that we should just smile through it. But Paul doesn't leave it at that. Here's what he said. He said, uh, For those God foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the likeness of his, of his Son, that he might be the firstborn among many uh, brothers. So, this foreknowing, it's not some trivial thing. God knows you. God has always known you, inside and out. Before time began, he had you in his heart. And this is an unbelievable thought, because if he knew us, if he knows us, then he also knows all the reasons that he should be demanding judgment, all the reasons that he should be angry with us, all the reasons that he should be disappointed and he should reject us. But instead... He saw all the reasons that we need to be rescued. All the reasons that he needed to come into the world and live and die and rise for us. This is what it means that he foreknew. That we are thoroughly known and just as thoroughly loved. And Paul says that this is that we would be conformed to the image of his son. See, we're too, way too often uh, operating with an in inadequate view of suffering. That, that the goal of life is to avoid suffering, to eliminate as much of it from our lives as possible, to be comfortable. But God has a different agenda, to conform us to be like Jesus, to shape our hearts, to be like his, to want nothing except to know him, to walk more closely with him so that finally we would be with him fully in heaven. And he did everything so that that could be the reality for us. That And, and he's saying here that there is no cost too high for that outcome. No cost too high for him. No cost too high for us. All of it leading to one outcome, that Jesus would be the first among many. That as he rose, we also would rise. That as he returned to his Father, we also would return to our Father. And verse 30 read, uh, 
Those he predestined, he also called. Those he called, he also justified. Those he justified, he also glorified. Do you see how closely those are all linked together? If you're predestined, you are all of these things too. It's all or nothing. For us, it's all. It's been described as this marvelous inevitability. It's as good as done because there are certain things that are in the past. And what's in the past can't be changed. Jesus died. Jesus rose. You were baptized. It's a done deal. So everything that we see and experience, that's God working out the good. Amen. Let's pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into, into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look on you with favor and give you peace. Amen.